What's up everybody watching this video? Today you're going to be learning a fantastic feature in the game and that is going to be enemies coming down from the top all the way down to the bottom. And I've skipped my intro. What's going on guys? It's Real Touch Gmail here and now Okay, usually okay, wait, I mix match that. <clears throat> all right. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Let's get into this. All right, so first off, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new class. And this is going to be called, or this will be our enemy. So I'm going to just name it enemy. And I'd like to just start off by adjusting our, our uh, how, how we load our sprite sheet in. Because currently right now, we are creating a whole another sprite sheet for each player. So player equals ss.grabImage. And what I want to do is I kind of just want to make a global sort of class that holds all of these textures. So, so let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. I'm just going to name this textures. And I'm going to say private buffered image sprite sheet equals null. And in our constructor here, so public textures, I'm going to say sprite sheet ss equals new sprite sheet. <clears throat> now, in here, we need a sprite sheet, right? So let's erase this from our player. Let's erase this as well. And we can erase that. And with our textures here, And we need to put equals there. And I'm going to say game game because we need to import the game so we can return our sprite sheet from our game class. I said game a lot there, but hopefully that made sense. If you don't know, this, what we're doing here with the sprite sheet was back in another tutorial. So go check that out. I believe it was six or seven. I may be wrong, but yeah. <clears throat> now what we're going to say is... Uh, or no, I'm sorry. SS, and we'll just say SS. So we're we're gonna, we're gonna do sprite sheet. And we won't equal that at all. Okay, so sprite sheet SS SS equals new sprite sheet, right? So now this is global, and we can use this. So now I'm just going to say get textures and create that as a method. I'll I'll create this as private void get textures and now all we have to do is really create the textures up here so public buffered image player missile enemy yeah that's it and before this tutorial I went ahead and just created a simple a simple enemy here all <laughs> it is very simple but that's that's all I did and so you can go ahead and make that now. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is in here, I'm gonna say player equals SS, grab image, column one, row one, 32 by 32. Missile equals SS dot grab image, column two, row one, 32, 32. Now actually, <clears throat> yeah, it's column, okay. And for the enemy, SS grab image, column three, row one, 32 by 32. This should all make sense to you. If not, go ahead and check out my sprite sheet tutorial. So now that we've got all that, all we have to do is go into game here. And we are getting an error because we have this in the player and we took that out. So we're just gonna take that out. And we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna create a new textures. So textures text and in our in it <clears throat> now this is very important it needs to be before our player and our controller because if we put this below our controller if we put this before our controller or our player our player and controller actually use graphics from our textures and now when code compiles it it compiles from top to bottom so it needs to run through these this textures here before it runs to the player or else it's not going to know what image it wants. Hopefully that makes sense. 
Okay, so now that we've got that, everything's good. And let's see here in, in our player, I'm going to say private textures text. And in our constructor, text, text, and this dot text equals text. So we're just, whatever texture gets passed in here, which will be from our game, is going to be, um, uh, have all of our images. So we just put in here, text. So now all we have to do is go to our player, and down here we just say text dot player. Fairly simple. And we have to do the same thing with the missile. <clears throat> so go to our bullet here and take this out. Now, this may seem like a lot of work, but I promise you it's going to make a hell of a lot of less lag for you because it won't be having to load the sprite sheet every time there's an image. Or every, every time it gets created, it won't have to load the sprite sheet. So we'll go into our game here, and instead of this, we'll say text, and everything looks good. So now we'll just make the enemy here. So I'll say private double x, and y, and in our constructor, double x, double y. This dot x equals x, this dot y equals y public void tick so this is all just basically the structure of any any real object that you want in your game this is usually the structure you're gonna want and this is the structure I use now tick we have if any if that object moves at all you're gonna want a tick method no if ands or buts about it you're gonna need a tick method or some sort of updating method <clears throat> okay so then I'm just going to render it out but first we need to put in textures here now this putting in this textures may confuse you a little bit and don't get confused because you're not gonna want to do this equals new textures because what that's doing and you would need the game in there so you can't do that but what if, if we were gonna do this and if you do this for any of your other classes so say you wanted uh, a game an instance of your game inside your player don't say game g equals new game do not do that because what you're doing is you're initializing a brand new game class a brand new one you're not using this one the old one you're using a brand new one and if we put in private textures we don't initialize it and in our constructor we say this dot text so this texture equals this texture in the constructor we're equaling it to what we set up in here, which is what we initialized it as first. Uh, <clears throat> now, hopefully you get that, but please do not just do textures text equals new textures because that will load up the textures twice instead of once, which is why we're doing this in the first place. Okay, so let's, let's get rid of that. And in here, we'll say textures, whoop, Textures text and this dot text equals text. All right, awesome. So then we'll just say g dot draw image text dot enemy x y null, and we have to cast these to integers because draw image only handles integers or only supports it. Okay, so all of that is good now. We can just say y minus equals. Five. We'll give that a generic value, but we can change that value later on in the tutorials where we can make it random speeds and, and have it spawn in random locations. All that stuff we will be doing in the future. But for now, we're going to go just a little little basic. <clears throat> so I'm going to go into the, into the controller here, private linked list enemy. Now again, we create a linked list for anything we want more than one of. Or I shouldn't say that. Anything we want more than five of. If we're ever going to possibly have more than five of anything, you're definitely going to want a link list or an array list or some sort of array. So I'm going to say enemy, temp enemy. And in the tick, I'm just going to copy this method and paste it. But basically, it's for loop int i equals zero. 
<clears throat> and it's just looping through the size of our list. Let me get rid of that. It's just looping through the size of our list and rendering them and updating all of them. So render G. And then we're just gonna get these methods down here. I'm just gonna copy them and paste it down. So instead of add bullet, add enemy, enemy, E dot add E, remove enemy, and enemy. There we go. And so now, basically, we're good. In our controller, in our our constructor, we can say add enemy, new enemy, one hundred. Let's let's make a let's make a row of enemies. So just a row going across the. I know this tutorial is getting a little bit long. But let's just make a row of enemies going across the entire screen. So we'll make a for loop int x equals zero. X is less than game dot width times game dot scale. Do that. <clears throat> X plus equals 64, we'll say. So we're going to have them spaced out twice. And, whoops. So now we, see, we say add enemy, new enemy, X, and then we'll say zero. And then what else is it? The constructor, our textures. So text. So we're going to need to import our textures in here as well. So textures, text. And in our constructor, textures, text. Now, the same thing here. You're not going to want to define our textures below here because we're using it up uh, above where we would define it. And again, code compiles from top to bottom, so that would not work. All right, so that's basically it. Let's go into our game here. What are we missing? We need text. And let's play it. And we see nothing. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's go into our, our tick method here. Oh, we are we are rendering it. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Let's see here. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Enemy. We need to plus equal five. Whoops. <clears throat> okay, so there it is. There's a row of enemies going down the center of, or not the center, but a whole width of our screen. Let's make it a little bit slower so you can see it. So yeah, that's basically it. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's try and get this up for 20 likes for such a long tutorial. But uh, yeah, I will see you guys next tutorial. Peace.